Hi, hello everybody. Welcome to another video, number three in my October 2022 series. I did these 31 paintings over the month of October for a challenge called Undying Tales, created by Stephanie Law. Today I'm gonna to be sharing with you my skunk. I'm very proud of this one because I was able to um, impart some of my humor into the painting. I think a lot of people didn't get my humor as I reference in my other video where I go over all, all of the paintings all together, which is linked above. Um, anyways, I don't know if a lot of people quite followed my humor, but I was able to put it in and I'm super proud of that. So if you're, you know, into that kind of thing, consider subscribing. There are, or there will be, videos made of these other four paintings that I did during that challenge because they are my favorites. I used multiple reference images for this painting. I was able to pick and choose elements that I liked and I was able to, I guess, kind of hold an image in my mind of what I wanted, which isn't something that I am always able to do. I don't have exactly synesthesia but I don't have super clear imagery in my brain that I can access to paint something the way I've I have envisioned it I'll have a vague notion of what I want to make but I won't necessarily have the details all worked out in any way shape or form but I was able to use the multiple images to get a sense of you know, what a what a skunk standing on its hands looks like. And um, not all skunks stand on their hands. At least I don't think they do, but the Eastern spotted skunk does, and it does so to make its projectiles more efficient, I guess. It needs to direct its spray as efficiently as possible. Also, when it's upside down, its bottom half has these markings that look a lot like a face and a big face like bigger than the skunk's head itself you can see it better in the finished painting or in i don't know if you search for photos online so i don't put splatters paint splatters in my work very often but i absolutely love them you can see me going to town here you know possibly overdoing it but i really wanted to create this like i don't know this this feeling of excitement, this feeling of movement in the piece and, you know, particularly directed in the tail area here. In the tail area, I wanted to give off a sense of maybe fireworks or uh, some other <laughs> explosion type <laughs> event. Um, I think it's... I think it's really fun to compare different biological adaptations. I mean, what is a volcano but a pimple on the Earth's crust? So this skunk's biological adaptation, its ability to stand on its hands, do a headstand so that it can direct its spray more efficiently, I think is pretty damn awesome. And I wanted to highlight it with lots of color and firework type energy in the tail area. I think one of the most consistent features of my art is rainbows or having many, many colors in a painting. It's something that I enjoy doing. I enjoy the process of doing it. I enjoy the effects of it. And I found it pretty easy to do with this here. Just the, the kind of almost neutral gray base that I created that was dark enough to definitely, you know, create a form, you know, the stripes, but also was light enough that I could add other colors on top. You can see the red that I've added in one area and you can see the blues that I've added in another. And then in the white area, I was able to add some yellows and also some blues. As much as I'd like to add color, um, unexpected color to all of my paintings, 
it's just just doesn't always lend itself well to it. And it's kind of a disappointment to me if you can't use every color on your palette or every colored pencil that you own. I'm sure I've mentioned this before in other videos, but I struggle to find a paintbrush that is fine enough for the details I like to add. But this silver black velvet number one works pretty good. It's not recommended to fill up your paper to check if it's dry. Like, it, it's better to like hold it up to the light or just wait until you're certain it's dry uh, because hand oils can affect the longevity of the piece. It can affect how the watercolor goes in the paper. It doesn't matter so much uh, because I'm using colored pencil. I think it affects colored pencil a little bit less. In some of the paintings that I did, I felt like I didn't put quite enough watercolor down before I switched to pencils. But in this piece, I think that it was a really good time to change, a really good point to switch over. I feel like I got most of the darks in and really I was just adding um, the final touches with the pencils instead of trying to build up layers with the pencils. There are plenty of people who use colored pencils alone to build up their layers. I just don't want to be doing that because uh, hand fatigue and I just, I don't know. I love the magical look of watercolor and I like the details you can get with colored pencils and I just really want to be mixing them together so that I can get the benefits of both uh, without some of the downsides. So at this stage I'm pretty much just adding the teal color and some yellow to create like a glowing highlight and then I'm using some of the other darker colors to darken my darks and increase contrast. I love that I was able to do kind of a backlight with this one, which wasn't necessarily in any of the reference photos that I used. So I'm kind of stunned that I was able to accomplish anything close to it. I'm also pretty happy with the amount of volume that the trunk of the skunk shows. I'm not always able to accomplish a sense of volume, or as I often call it, like a 3D look. That is my goal, to make things look real. It's so satisfying to me when it works out and disappointing to me when it does not. I don't like my paintings to look flat. I like them to have dimension. I like them to look like they could in some way be real and I found that the way to create that is with shadows. However, I'm not always able to understand how the light would hit this imaginary object or being on my paper. I don't think I was entirely clear about why I think I brought my humor to this painting, but I'm sure you can figure it out. Just like, come on, a skunk. Being able to do a handstand to spray more effectively, it's like totally slapstick comedy, which actually is not totally my thing, but I really don't know how to bring a sense of comedy or amusement to any watercolor painting if it's not like kind of in your face. I would really like to find ways in the future to, you know, bring the joy and humor of life that isn't uh, so on your nose, but at least I've made a start. And here we've arrived at the final results. Ah, you made it to the end. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for subscribing if that's something that you want to do. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.